Today we're going to make together a rural recipe of Umbria. What do we mean by a rural recipe? Number one, if it's of Umbria, of course it's of Italy. That is, it must be delicious because you're feeding Italians. Rural cuisine means it must be quick and easy to prepare because the farm woman has to cook, but she also has to go down and slop her pigs, scythe grass for her rabbits, clean her home, etc., etc. So her cooking a meal for the workers at her house must be delicious because you're feeding Italians, but it must be simple and quick to make. A favorite rural dish of the Umbrian farmers is called sugo del contadino, the sauce of the farmer. I think it should be called the sauce of the farm woman, sugo della contadina. Anyway, let us make that sauce together. Here are the ingredients. I bought the meats needed for the sugo del contadino, a couple sausages we're going to put in because we're making it for four people, some beef, and I wanted beef magro, that is without too much fat, cut into big chunks. I wanted a chicken thigh, bones, and also a couple of puntarelle, which are pork ribs. And those are all going to be sauteed together with garlic, a white onion, celery, carrot, and tomato sauce. If you don't have your own tomato sauce, just buy any good salsa di pomodoro. You're going to need to season the pasta after you've made it with the sugo del contadino with parmigiano. Please grate your parmigiano fresh. It'll taste even better. Parmigiano. And look where I can grate my parmigiano. Ah, che profumo. Now let's get started on cooking. We're going to cook the beef first, just in some vino rosso made by Pino. If you're not making your own vino rosso, buy a nice dry red. I'm making this sauce for about four people. You might say, oh, only that much meat? Well, wait till you see. So I put that into the pan and just how much quantity? This much. In Italy, the watchword when you're cooking is quanto basta. Turn on the gas. I'm going to let it simmer a bit. How long? I don't know, five to ten minutes. It's starting to look a bit tender. And then I'll add the next meat, which will be the ribs. And then at the end, I'll add chicken because that'll cook more swiftly. And the sausages come near the end too with the onion, the carrot, the celery, and the tomato sauce. But you'll see all that in a minute. Our meat has simmered down. We still have a little bit of red wine left. Add here what's called in Italian the puntarelle. We know them as pork ribs. And I'm going to add actually a little extra because Pino loves these puntarelle. We'll add the pork ribs. And look what the butcher gave me. Bones, bones of beef. In Italy, our butchers will give us bones. If we're making soup or anything, give us bones. And as the butcher said, add those to your sugo del contadino to enhance the flavor. So we're gonna take it over to the wood stove now. I'm using a wood stove because we always have it on in the winter time. And the farm women often cook on the wood stove. But now these are going to simmer together put a cover on this and then most of the red wine will evaporate and as the red wine evaporates I will add the vegetables the chicken thigh salt and olive oil it has simmered on the stove and as you can see most of the red wine has been absorbed and evaporated and now we're going to take the meats over here to the gas stove because I'm gonna use a little bit more heat right now. I'm gonna turn the heat on, and I want to add here the carrot, the onion, the celery, the garlics, and I'll just give it another chop, maybe chop it in half, okay? And I'm going to put in, the spray of the celery is great. You don't have to chop it because the sauce is gonna absorb the flavors of all this. Remember we're doing 
the sugo della contadina, contadino, who has a lot of work to do. She can't take a lot of time to dice onion, etc. So I am just peeling the onion, white or yellow onion, plopping it in, add the garlic cloves. Three, four, it's all to your taste. It's quanto basta, remember, as much as you need. So let's add the garlic cloves. Now we have all our vegetables in here, as I can show you. Still a little bit of red wine. And now we're going to add the chicken. So I'm going to add two sausages as well, and I'll poke them. My last presentation, I know we're in rural life, you saw sausages like this being made by Paola and her husband, Leandro Norcino. And now it's time for the sauce. I have uh, some of Pino's tomato sauce that he put up for me. So we'll put that in. And I'm going to add a little tomato sauce that I got at our grocery. This is all going to simmer, but there's a missing key ingredient. What else can it be but extra virgin olive oil? This is ours. If you can't get olive oil like this, you may want to order it also from an olive producer. For example, our son Keegan uh, produces olive oil. And I'm just going to pour it in like this. Again, it's quanto basta. And then salt. We use coarse salt and it's about a handful for now. And now I'm going to cover this and simmer it. The chicken is cooking now with it and the sausages. They were added later. They were added later because they have less cooking time than the beef does and the ribs. If, however, I were using an organic chicken, which I'm not in this case, it would have gone in with the beef and the ribs because it would be much more firm. This is not an organic chicken. That is, it will cook in less time. So it's going in with the sausages. And this is going to simmer away and we'll check it later when it's ready, that could be about 40 minutes. I've been simmering the sauce on the wood stove and it simmered for about half an hour, 40 minutes. And it's come out quite beautifully. And I'm gonna put it over here on low heat. Let it simmer a bit more. And I'm going to cook the pasta now. And I would suggest using a, a large pasta. We generally make one handful to, that's a portion, three, four. So I've made pasta for Peter and myself, but guess what? I'm going to make one more portion for the surprise visitor. We might have one, you never know. This is already boiling in a good amount of water. The pasta was put in at a rolling boil. I want to show you the uh, thickness or not of the sugo. It's still quite liquid, but by the time my pasta cooks, I bet that's going to be evaporated. It's just delicious. After the pasta is ready, we're going to season it with this sauce, set aside the meat, and that becomes the second course. The sugo del contadino, you're making two dishes in really one motion. You make your tomato sauce, and all the goodness of the tomato sauce will become the second course. Pasta is ready. It's al dente. I've just tested it to the tooth. A little bit chewy. We can't overcook the pasta. The meat is coming later. So now we're going to take some of this delicious sugo. 
there's the consistency that we want right here. Mix it up. This is our pasta al contadino. And now we're going to add a touch of the freshly grated parmigiano. And then we're going to prepare for our second course. And that is all the meats, the odori. In Italian cooking, you call the onion and the carrot, the garlic, the flavors, the odori. Cosa ti sembra? Mm, non è male. <laughs> Pino è says... buono, chi l'ha fatta? <laughs> He says, it looks pretty good, who made it? Allora, con parmigiano o senza pino? A little? A little. A little. How's that? Good? A little sprinkle? A little sprinkle. Okay. Thank you very much. Buon appetito! After our pasta is finished, the second course, along with a vegetable of choice, will be the meat that was in this sugo del contadino. Let's see what Pino thinks of the meat. This is going to be our second course, yes. il secondo piatto. Yes. <laughs> Come ti sembra? It's very, very beautiful. It's Thank so you. Good. It's so good. It will be so good. good. You're talking like an American. Yes, love. <laughs> Buon appetito. Thank you very much.